Okay, a, a couple of points. Uh, you know, the patients are always screened, and the point we're going to be looking at is the anatomic component of screening for LVOT calcium. And it turns out, I mean, the the uh, uh, the CAT scans that we do for uh, TAVR screening are uh, infinitely important uh, in this and can't be overutilized. And uh, uh, again, the uh, valvular and paravalvular uh, dimensions and calcifications in this area are critically important in what we're talking about. Um, you can get hung up a little bit about what, what really is the annulus, and by definition, it really is uh, on the right side in the yellow. Uh, it's a, it's a three-dimensional non-uniplane uh, device that uh, extends up uh, above uh, the inferior most extent of the sinuses and then uh, two millimeters below. But at any way, usually when you see these things, they're huge, they're overwhelming, uh, and they're kind of uh, dominate the LVO alpha tract wherever you uh, define it. And uh, then you can take this in short axis, and uh, most methods for uh, semi-quantitation are uh, looking at calcium uh, as it relates to uh, the three cusps with three different dimensions, and you can uh, look at it at the leaflet level, annulus, and LVOT level. And I, I do think that's important because sometimes I think when you're hammering away at these things or not hammering away at these things with a big pair of alveolar leak, it's really uh, not so much the uh, the uh, LVOT calcium as aspects that are above the annulus. And uh, the grade, uh, the moderate and severe grades, uh, I think, uh, in this semi-quantitative scheme are extension into uh, the uh, LVOT by at least a millimeter or greater than 50 percent of the, that uh, segmental region, or both if it's uh, severe. And those are things to keep your uh, eye on. Um, the potential secondary complications, usually you're sort of uh, uh, push-pulled between either rupture or paravalvular leak, and, and uh, it's uh, one extreme or the other. I think the other thing I keep my eye on is the number of post-dilatations can be sort of secondarily uh, uh, committing you to a higher risk of embolic uh, stroke. So I think that should be included uh, um, on uh, the uh, potential consequences as well. Uh, annular rupture occurs when you're using a balloon expandable more than self-expanding. We've learned that. Um, it uh, um, uh, occurs during redilatation and self-expanding. Uh, it occurs when you try to oversize with cover indexes of greater than 20 percent. In addition, uh, small uh, annuli uh, means you're probably going to have to use a bigger uh, uh, valve and uh, going to put it at risk. Uh, narrowed calcified aortic root sinuses with bulky leaflets for superannular uh, issues, circumferential uh, calcification at the STJ, heavily calcified bicuspid valves are uh, an issue. This was an article that we all quote now and sort of was the first look at um, uh, what uh, potentially are the risk factors, and it was just a 31 patient consecutive series from 16 centers uh, and uh, came up with uh, uh, several uh, criteria. Uh, and those most, mostly could be summarized as uh, the presence of LVOT, calcium, particularly severe, aggressive oversizing, and balloon expandable prosthesis. And if you go from left to right, these are just uh, uh, increase in gradations of calcium. And if you look on, particularly in the far right, that's the sort of thing that uh, we're usually thinking about uh, avoiding uh, doing TAVI at all. And if it's an intermediate risk or even a low high risk, I think we're still thinking about surgery or medical therapy. These can be very nasty tears when you see them. This is uh, just an example of uh, a tear that occurred at uh, uh, a, a subannular, and we knew this from postmortem studies, into the annulus and then dissected and spiraled down across the free wall and eventually ruptured out into the, um, uh, into the pericardial sac. And uh, this is just getting back to that original uh, article of 31 patient series. Here's the p-values that shook out again, the calcium uh, score, degree of calcium, and uh, the prosthetic uh, uh, size, but more importantly, the cover index and whether or not it was a balloon expandable valve. Uh, the classifications are fairly straightforward. This was a placeholder for me, and this was a, a case we had done 
uh, and I wish I had the pictures because we had published this, and I, I still couldn't get access to the pictures. But I had just, we had just seen this uh, case series of three patients that did well with uh, aortic uh, root hematomas and they could be followed. And this must have been two weeks after that. And I was sort of reassuring our group that this is probably going to be okay. 15 minutes, 20 minutes in there, and boom. Uh, everything tears apart. And so we had post on this one, and uh, it did start out as a hematoma. It was uh, actually, there was a lot of LVOT calcium, but it looked like it originated from a small cusp, or, or excuse me, a uh, small root with very bulky leaflets, and uh, tore down and eventually worked its way out on the posterior aspect of the, uh, of the myocardial wall. And just sort of in summary, what are some of the preventive measures that we can uh, look at? And, and that's identifying whether or not a patient is at high risk. Spend a lot of time on, on the CT scans, looking at the location and severity of the calcium. Uh, uh, consider modifying the uh, therapeutic uh, strategy. You're going to use different size uh, uh, and uh, types of uh, valves. Uh, uh, post-dilatation, pre-dilatation, uh, the more you do that, the more concerning it's going to be. Um, you know, Webb has uh, uh, a nice paper a year or two ago that showed with his uh, Sapien 3s, he could start out uh, very uh, conservatively um, with lower inflations and work his way up, and I think had a, a peri-leak of 3.5% uh, with that. Uh, modify uh, implantation uh, plan. Uh, you may want to start out by going a little higher if there's a big ledge that's five, six centimeters or millimeters down, even though we're uh, trained very well not to go that far. And I've had one patient that we had a very nice outcome, and it was almost planned as a two double, uh, um, uh, two staged uh, valve implant strategy. So we went uh, right at the level of the, or slightly above it of the calcified ridge, knowing that we were going to come in with the second one and seal it off at that level. And at that point, you're not worried about, you know, the, uh, the heart block. You're worried about the patient surviving uh, the procedure, and it really sealed it off uh, very well. Uh, avoid uh, uh, multiple uh, uh, re-balloon procedures and be thinking about PVL plugs if you can. And uh, um, uh, once again, these patients, um, I think uh, this is high risk stuff. They're not intermediate risk based on the criteria that we usually use. And be thinking about surgery still in these patients. Um, this was uh, just one case I wanted to show, and then I'm going to wrap it up. But in these patients, we, we always assume, and the dissections a lot of times do occur in the LVOT and propagate from, from there. I mean, that's a high-risk zone. But there are multiple areas in these heavily calcified uh, regions, uh, including fusion at the commissures and so forth. Uh, and uh, and uh, just keep in mind that they may be the source of it. So this was a patient that uh, um, had a, a valve implant. This was immediately post. You can see the annulus is a little lower, but look where the look where the uh, uh, column of flow is. It's really uh, above uh, the annulus in the uh, root uh, where that nodule sticks in. And uh, in this case. I don't think you have to, um, you know, blast that area of the annulus and, and subannulus, but um, you can uh, overdilate uh, uh, above, particularly if you have a V8, and and, uh, and get a result uh, like this um, by uh, not uh, post dilating the LVOT calcification, um, but um, excuse me, uh, but by uh, dilating, it's not going to play. But uh, you, you completely obliterated uh, the flow in that case. And, you know, and, and uh, I know Ted used to talk about these valves a lot. They're not fused at all. There's no element of that. And there is a small element of it. And when they're heavily calcified, they can impinge. And when they impinge on self-expanding valves, I, I'm convinced that it, uh, they, they don't, you know, these valves don't just fold over this uh, 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 calci calcified uh, segment that is impinging on the lumen, they leave a gutter, and the gutter can sort of extend to a certain degree <coughs> below. 
And, uh, and it may be a matter of, uh, if it's in a more ideal location, if it is uh, above it, uh, to go after it. And uh, others, if you can really pin it down well with a good uh, transesophageal echo, it may be something you just want to walk away from, come back, or simultaneously uh, put a plug in. And, uh, and I think we've become better. In our, in our lab, we've generally gone with self-expanding uh, devices in these cases. And I don't know, um, Ivas or Ted, what you guys are doing with these cases now. If you decide that you are going to do them and they're not going to go to surgery, um, uh, and they're, you know, in their three to four plus uh, segments that are very extensive and protrude significantly into the LVO team. Yeah, I, I think all those are really good um, points, Wes. We've seen patients that are medium or low risk that have very hostile calcification, and we send them to surgery. I think that's great. We have uh, we have really good surgeons that can that can deal with that and leave them with with trace, uh, no paravalvular leak, and and no problem, et cetera. I do think the plug valve combination is not a bad one. Um, and when you talk about gutters, is basically what you're talking about. It's the commissure. That, that's not sealed, and that's why it looks like a gutter. And um, the, those, you can, you can sit very nicely, uh, a vascular plug or something like this. I think what's important is that you don't uh, keep pushing down a road where you keep uh, dilating or becoming overly aggressive with the sizing to get rid of the leak, and then you end up with, with, with some of the ruptures that we've seen already. So... Um, and, and even patients with mitral prosthesis sometimes will give you a very deformed annulus. It'll prevent some of the sealing, and in those cases, it's not not bad to leave them with mild, moderate paravalvular leak or yeah. plug, rather than than trying to do something that will hurt the patient. So I think those are they're all good can, uh, strategies. Now, as far as choice of valve, um, until the pro came out, uh, we were using valves that had skirts on the outside. Lotus, good one if you can, uh, right, if it's available uh, or if it's in a trial, uh, Sapien 3. But I think what, what, what is yet to be seen for me is how, how well the skirt on the outside for the pro works. And, and maybe, Ted, you have some experience you want to share or... or well, yeah. different, different direction of comment. Um, we do have some experience of cases with the Lotus valve where in a heavily calcified leaflet setting or whatever, it wouldn't expand initially and uh, we'd recapture, and the second try would expand easily, and we realized that we had a very effective metal valvuloplasty, mm -hmm. basically, that we were able to modify the calcium somehow. Uh, there is a uh, aortic valve dilatation system in development that's basically a wire cage, uh, and that may be a pre dill strategy for these, device, uh, these valves. And then there's shockwave, so uh, yeah. a lithotripsy right. for the, the, uh, the valve. And uh, you know, we may be able That's to define calcium yeah. scores or some parameter that tells us where we ought to be thinking about, uh, again, a mechanical, a wireframe pre dill or a, a lithotripsy. So I think there are solutions to this coming that are better yeah. than cobbling together two valves or a valve and a plug. Yeah, I think there's going to be a great role for that. I, you know, it, it may be my skill set, too. I, I think the, the plugging of, of these valves is very difficult. It's not like you're doing a surgical prosthesis for me. Uh, uh, Ted, you've had good success with well, it. I, I have little, very little experience with core valve, which is harder just because the frame's longer. But um, yeah. uh, Sapien valves are pretty easy. If there's it a big is. leak, yeah. uh, the ABP 4s through a 4 or 5 French catheter uh, are pretty easy to deliver, so I don't. I, I think it is a good strategy. What do you think your success rate is with the fours now uh, for these valves? Well, success rate in delivery, it's a hundred percent. Success rate in closing the leak acutely, right. I don't know, eighty plus, and uh, many of those do fill in. Ballpark.